All right, I think the numbers have stopped climbing, so I'm going to get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Hello, and thank you all for joining us today for our 30 by 30 virtual expo series uh, installation. I think this is number three, uh, episode three. That's what we should say. So a few pieces of housekeeping before we get started. The meeting is being recorded, um, so it will be available on our website uh, in a couple of days. And if you have any questions today, we'd like you to submit them through the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. The chat is open for technical issues, and certainly if you want to chat with each other, um, but uh, I will be monitoring the Q&A. So if you want me to see anything, that's where you should put them. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Norris, and I'm the Deputy Secretary for Biodiversity and Habitat with the California Natural Resources Agency. I lead the state's 30 by 30 initiative, and I am just so excited to be part of the 30 by 30 partnership with all of you. Whether you know it or not, you're part of the partnership. Um, those of you joining us for the first time, 30 by 30 is an international movement. It's focused on conserving 30% of all lands and waters by the year 2030. And here in California, we've committed to this goal and released the Pathways to 30 by 30 strategy. And this has all kinds of information about what does it mean to be counting towards 30 by 30, uh, how we want to get there, and how important every habitat throughout California is for making this successful. So for more information, I encourage you to uh, check out this document or watch the plenaries from the 30 by 30 uh, partnership kickoff event, which we held last month. Links to both are being added into the chat now. <clears throat> so the 30 by 30 partnership is a movement focused on reaching the 30 by 30 goal by working together, learning from each other and supporting each other. So as I said a month ago on September 28th, we hosted an event to kick off the 30 by 30 partnership at the California Natural Resources Agency. And this was an amazing event bringing together so many people. Um, and it included a community expo to make connections with over 20 agency partners, funders, and technical assistance providers. And the reason we did this is because 30 by 30 is really a locally driven effort. Um, we at the state are making resources available to partners throughout the state who are really effective at delivering conservation. Um, and the expo was a way to highlight all those opportunities. The event was filled to capacity, and we know that not everyone was able to join us in person for a variety of reasons. So this virtual expo series is an attempt to bring that in-person experience uh, to those of you throughout the state who weren't able to be there. So we're here to keep building momentum and the connections we made that day and to keep learning from each other and working together. And um, today I'm very excited to be joined by Andy Fristensky from the Sierra Nevada Conservancy and Whitney Brennan from the Tahoe Conservancy. Andy and Whitney uh, will give a brief introduction of their programs, fundings, and other resources that will advance 30 by 30. And then we'll spend most of our time today addressing questions from you, our partners, who are going to help us achieve this goal. Um, my team will also try to answer some questions as they come in online if we're able. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andy. Tell us a little about the Sierra Nevada Conservancy. Thank you so much and good afternoon everyone. It is wonderful to see such participation in this webinar. It's great to see some uh, familiar names myself. Just to inform you a little bit about the Sierra Nevada Conservancy. Uh, we are a state agency uh, whose region serves all our part of uh, 24 uh, counties. Um, the Sierra Nevada mountain range and Cascade uh, and beyond. We are very excited about 30 by 30 because it aligns with uh, the types of programs that uh, we've been administering uh, over the years uh, at SNC. Our mission uh, for the Sierra Nevada Conservancy is we want to initiate, encourage, and support efforts that improve the environmental, economic, and social well being of the Sierra Nevada region, uh, its communities, and the people of California. Uh, we recognize. Um, the, that our region touches all of Californians uh, in some pretty significant ways. Uh, as an example, 75% of uh, California's drinking water um, originates in the headwaters within the region uh, that we serve. Uh, the Sierra Nevada Conservancy region is about 25% of the land area uh, of California. 
And we are funded uh, in different ways. Uh, in the past, it's been through uh, bonds and more recently, it's been through some uh, the state general funds. And we've organized ourselves over the years with a primary initiative known as the Watershed Improvement Program. And it has a, a focus on forest health because we recognize how that is important and touches on all of our main goals. And I just wanna share those goals um, with you. Um, forest and watershed health, strategic lands conserved, uh, vibrant recreation and tourism, resilient Sierra Nevada communities, and impactful regional identity. The most obvious place that uh, 30 by 30 um, aligns with SNC's programs is strategic land uh, conservation. We have separate uh, a grant program uh, for um, most of those goal areas and it's a very specific one for strategic lands conserved. In fact, uh, this year, next month um, at a board meeting, uh, we plan to award uh, roughly $7 million in grants um, and these types of projects could be anything from um, fee title uh, acquisitions to conservation easements. Um, our program, uh, we separate planning dollars from implementation dollars, uh, as we recognize that um, not every funding uh, program might uh, have funds for planning. Um, we feel sometimes that's an, a niche that we can help uh, fill. We work primarily with our communities. We, we recognize it's the, whether it's the land trusts or the um, RCDs or the uh, fire safe councils. Um, they're the ones that are, are, are generating the ideas and building the ideas and look to an organization like the Sierra Nevada Conservancy potentially to fund, um, but recognizing that, you know, we don't have all the funds in the world. Um, so we try to provide some capacity in different ways, um, even if it's not something that we're going to fund eventually as an agency, but perhaps to line up that organization um, to get funding elsewhere. Uh, that, and that's covered in a few different ways. Um, throughout our region, uh, we will host grant writing workshops. Um, we also, um, through the generous support of the Department of Conservation, uh, Sierra Nevada Conservancy is a, a grantee of the Regional Forest and Fire uh, RFF, RFFCP uh, program. And what we're doing with those dollars is trying to provide some basic capacity um, to some tribal organizations as well as to some smaller organizations that maybe don't, haven't always had that bandwidth uh, to be able to apply for uh, some of these dollars. One of the models that uh, we find that has worked well for us is uh, we have several of our employees spread throughout our region uh, that help uh, represent the areas that they live in. Um, for example, we'll have a, an employee in the, the northern part of our uh, state that uh, might live in Shasta County and is able then to interact with folks of Shasta County and Siskiyou County and, and those counties close by. Um, so we're there on the ground, uh, hopefully to hear those uh, project ideas and bring them forward, um, uh, not just again to SNC funding, but potentially if there's not a fit with our program uh, to identify what other programs might be available. Uh, you'll notice uh, in our website, there's an opportunity to even sign up for a, a funding newsletter. Um, that's where we have uh, someone that goes, <laughs> does a lot of the hard work figures out all the different grant programs that exist out there uh, to help you identify where potentially you can apply uh, and get some funds. Uh, again, if it's not a, a fit for S and C. That's we, awesome. I want a copy of that. <laughs> you <laughs> That's can really sign valuable. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sign up at, at, at the website. Okay. And uh, I'll just wrap up and, and say, well, we are planning on having another uh, strategic land conservation grant uh, program next year. Um, we know we have roughly uh, $7 million available in this budget year uh, and are very hopeful for some uh, nature-based solutions um, budget funds for next year, uh, which would uh, increase uh, our ability to fund even, even more programs. And uh, through our website on our, our funding section, 
uh, you'll be able to identify uh, all our different uh, grant opportunities. As I mentioned, we also have for forest and watershed health and for recreation and tourism. And all those really do feed into uh, 30 by 30 goals. So. That's I'll awesome. Quit. Thank you. So there is one question that's asking if you're a 501c3. So we can clarify, you're a state agency. You're, a, you're part of state government. You're part of California Natural Resources Agency. Um, so that's an easy question we can answer. Thanks, Andy. Thank let's, uh, let's hear from Whitney about the other conservancy up there in the mountains and how you relate the Sierra Nevada Conservancy. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Jen. Great to see everyone here today. So my name is Whitney Brennan, and I work for the California Tile Conservancy. And if you guys don't know, we are also a state agency, and we have jurisdiction over the California side of the Lake Tahoe Basin. And our mission is focused on restoring and enhancing natural and recreational resources in the basin. And I'm really excited to be presenting today with Sierra Nevada Conservancy, because I feel like we often work in parallel with them. We have similar goals and objectives and they cover the rest of the Sierra Nevada region. So we're kind of a piece of that bigger puzzle. Next slide, please. So we are working to advance 30 by 30 in a few different ways. So one of our key ways of doing that is acquiring sensitive lands, also restoring ecological function, and then finally building a more resilient future under climate change. Next slide, please. So for acquisition, we already own, and over the last uh, three or four decades, we've managed to buy a lot of property. We own and manage nearly 4,700 properties, which totals about 6,500 acres. And as you can see, we're the orange on the map. We have some very large parcels and some very small, small parcels. Actually, the majority of our lands are very small quarter acre parcels within neighborhoods, often in between houses. And so having this big range of land that we own allows us to do a variety of things and, and reach a lot of benefits. Our acquisitions help us prevent future development, provide wildlife habitat, protect biodiversity, and improve water quality. And in addition, we sometimes buy land that has an aging development or infrastructure on it, and we take, we remove that uh, development and we restore it back to natural habitat. Next slide, please. Also, we focus on restoring ecological function. A lot of our work focuses on forest and wetland restoration. As you can see here on the bottom, we do a lot of work on our lands and basin lands where we have forests and we're trying to restore the resilience of these forests. And this gives us benefits for wildlife habitat, carbon sequestration, and hydrological function. And on the top here is one of our signature projects, the Upper Truckee Marsh. Uh, this is one of the lands we own and we've restored over 200 acres there. We created a new wetland, reconnected the floodplain uh, with a series of new channels. And this actually has habitat for some protected species. And it also helps us do things like protect water quality, um, helps the marsh capture and store more carbon, and allows for some equitable lake access for visitors and residents. Next slide, please. And as everyone knows, climate change is affecting us everywhere. In Tahoe, we're looking at warmer temperatures, longer droughts, less snowpack, and most recently, severe wildfire and smoke. And so we're trying to think about everything differently. We're looking through all our projects and all the work in the basin through the lens of climate change. How would we do anything differently now that we're thinking about this future with climate change? So some of the things we're thinking about how we're gonna do things a little differently is moving to a large scale approach. We're thinking about resilience at a landscape scale across jurisdictions, across land ownerships, and how, how can we think about resilience at that scale instead of just project by project. We're also thinking about things like strategic acquisition, like do we uh, purchase lands that are along a riparian corridor perhaps, so we can restore a longer corridor and help improve wildlife connectivity. And we're also trying to work more closely with the Washoe Tribe of Nevada and California. We awarded them a grant to restore Mylawata, which is Meeks Meadow, in coordination with the Forest Service. Next slide. And we're also supporting our partners to advance 30 by 30 as well. Our agency plays a convening and collaborative role in the basin. We help uh, 
get the basin to meet state priorities, and we're trying to strengthen the coordination between the agencies so that we can plan and implement these projects throughout the California side of the basin, whether it's work on our lands or through grants. And we do all this to implement the Environmental Improvement Program. That's something special we have in Tahoe. We call it the EIP. It's kind of the backbone of what we do to reach these state priorities. It helps us coordinate and prioritize what we're gonna fund, and it provides these different avenues so we can meet these climate or biodiversity goals. And we're always looking for new partnerships and new ways to support current partners to implement the EIP or have new partners. So um, as you can see here, we provide grants to partners for acquisition, planning, implementation, monitoring, and technical assistance. And activities that are eligible or anything that's consistent with our mission and our strategic plan, which can all be found on our website. And eligible entities are public agencies, tribes, and nonprofits. If you want more information on this, um, our grant guidelines can be found on our website. If you search Tahoe Conservancy Grant Guidelines, there's a lot of information in there. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask now, or you can feel free to contact me. Um, if you go to the next slide, my email information is right here. Thanks. Awesome. So Andy, come back on and we'll ditch the slides and have a little chat. So first of all, just thank you. And I, I love hearing from both of you about sort of this strategic vision in place. You know, when we were putting together the Pathways document, I was just very aware that people know their place best, right? That local regional conservation is probably gonna be most successful. You have the most on the ground knowledge. We didn't need a statewide prioritization set up. We need to like empower the regional groups. That's at least my vision. And hearing the way you're talking about the work you do, it just, it validates that for me. So thank you. <laughs> so I'm curious, Andy, maybe about your process for identifying strategic acquisition. Sort of how does that, how does that work in the real world? Um, give us a flavor of what that looks like, maybe. Yeah, th thanks for the question. And I would point out a couple of things. Um, one is a few years ago, under a different grant program, uh, we funded the Sierra Cascade Land Trust Council, um, a grant to come up with a regional plan um, that could essentially identify some of those strategic lands um, that could be uh, preserved uh, for the future. So uh, we were very interested in providing that grant because not only uh, would it help us uh, identify, but it's also something that we can share with, with other uh, state partners um, or whoever else uh, would like to take a look at. Um, I would say though also, and something that again, I, I think is a key to our success is having the local SNC employee part of the collaborative groups um, that are identifying the, those projects. Um, so it's not just that it, SNC, I think we look at ourselves as um, a good intermediary between uh, the policies that perhaps come um, from Sacramento to uh, the on the ground partners, right? So we can take those policies that are coming from the state and um, disseminate them uh, to our partners, but then also be able to voice the concerns of our region um, um, to our decision makers uh, right throughout the state. Yeah. So we really just strategize by, you know, starting with those those partners of okay, hey, we've got a project idea. Um, uh, how does that fit into SNC's program? Of course, we will have a whole set of guidelines on the types of projects um, that we are are looking for, types of of course, eligible um, applicants, which would include non 501c3 nonprofits, tribal entities, and, um, and government agencies. So primarily through our uh, guideline establishment, it gives that, uh, that mile a marker for uh, the regional folks to aim for. And then we work in collaboration uh, with them. If it's something that we see maybe is not a fit for our program, uh, then it's like, okay, well, we don't give up on you. Let's see where else it could fit throughout the state. I love that. That's awesome. Whitney, how about, how about your process? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> just as Andy was saying, we look to other uh, working groups, like the EIP has a lot of working groups for each different topic. 
And so we can look to them a lot of times to see what their priorities are for that specific subject area, and that can help guide us. But once again, I think, yeah, we play a similar role where we're trying to bring in the state priorities to the region, but we're also listening to the region priorities and trying to bring those back to the state. I think we're kind of like the liaison between the two. So I think that helps us. But yeah, for, for acquisition, sometimes we key in on something like it's connected to the Upper Truckee Marsh. And if we had that, that would be really helpful to expand our restoration. Sometimes people come to us and then we go through, you know, different program areas in our agency and look at everyone's kind of gets an opinion on, is this valuable for wildlife? Is this valuable for forestry? Is this valuable for watershed? Um, so I think we look at it from a lot of different angles to try to find value in the acquisitions before we make a final decision on what's where we should move forward. That's great. Um, Andy, can you say more about the grant for uh, getting sort of organizations capacity? Can you say a little bit more about how that works or how do you find, is it sort of just an open solicitation or are you actively identifying groups that you know throughout the Sierras that have come to you and said, we'd love capacity? I'm just curious, that's. Yeah, uh, we're actively, again, since uh, we're out there with the partners, uh, we're actively engaging uh, with those groups and with the regional forest and fire capacity program, there are specific guidelines for that, that uh, as a grantee that we need to be, which include uh, developing regional plans. So a primary function of that is for a regional um, area to come up with their own list of priorities, uh, right? And we recognize that uh, there are some organizations that maybe have to draw their maps with highlighters on a piece of paper, or others have a fantastic GIS uh, specialist. Um, so we're just trying to identify and have the knowledge of those organizations to be able to go in and say, okay, well, this is an organization that, that can use to uh, the ability to lift up a bit. Um, and if we can help them out there, uh, we'll do so. And if I could add just one other thing with our own then land conservation program, I think another key that we very much appreciate is for any implementation project or, or planning project, we ask for a, a a simple concept proposal. Uh, we will review that as staff. Uh, and if it's an implementation project, we'll actually um, send people out to that site visit and provide direct feedback, right? So um, at that stage before a full proposal is due, uh, they've already heard from uh, SNC evaluators on how that, that project lines up with the program or doesn't, provides tips on how to improve that to give it the best chance. Uh, for some That's time. really helpful, yeah. So I'm looking at some questions in the chat, in the Q&A. Um, someone's asking, how does the funding work? The budgeted money is so dispersed. There's no unified application process. I think they're talking about 30 by 30. And um, so I'll answer that, which is that that's purposeful to some degree. You know, we wanted to use existing functional effective programs rather than create some new central spot for all of 30 by 30 because it's a, there's a hundred million acres in California, right? We want all the existing programs that are dispersed throughout the state to be helping us achieve this larger goal. So WCB has funding in multiple different programs through this budget cycle. You know, if we have an opportunity to provide money later, it might be through a different program where they have a need. Um, we wanted to give funding to each of the conservancies because they have a unique geography and, and partner base. Um, but I do sort of appreciate what both of you have said, which is that you try to help your local partners identify and cobble together maybe the resources they need to achieve their larger project, that they don't just come to one and then they have to go get another piece, that you serve as sort of a, you know, a technical assistance partner in a way to help them put that whole set together, especially with that funding newsletter. It sounds pretty awesome. So um, I don't know if you wanna add anything to what I just said, if there's anything you wanna correct. No, I, I would say SNC, we are looking at uh, something we're going to pilot called the Landscape Investment Strategy, uh, which is trying to take on that effort of pooling together different um, funding resources from various agencies and apply it on a landscape. Um, oh, cool. with the idea being, you know, anything from forest health to recreation to land conservation, um, because we've heard that, right? We've heard that, that same uh, type of question over the years, and it makes a lot of sense, right? And that's 
takes away some of the capacity of our partners as they're applying to all these programs. So right. a way as a state, we can figure that out. Uh, That's awesome. We're That's give it a great. Shot and see what we can do. So I'm getting some questions about just timelines. Uh, do you each have rolling applications or are they at set times of the year? Whitney, go first. Ours, ours is rolling. So you would, for 30 by 30, you contact me. Bas basically, depending on your interest, you would contact the person in the program with that interest to talk to them about a potential opportunity to partner. Great. And Andy? And ours is not rolling. Um, so we don't have dates announced yet for 2023. We're trying to figure that out now. Uh, essentially trying to figure out if we're going to uh, have, we have some money available, we know, but we also are wondering about next year's budget, if we can add it together into one pot or not. Got it. I, by the end of the year, I anticipate on our, our website that we'll have the calendar of events so you'll know when deadlines will be. All right. So our partners heard it here first. You're going to tell me so I can make sure we put that out too, because sure. we want to help amplify anything you're working on. Um, awesome. So I'm looking at the Q and A. This is a general question. Are there state conservancies that cover all regions of California? The answer is no, right? There are, I think there are 10 conservancies throughout the state. And I think each one came about probably from a unique set of circumstances at the time. I don't know if you want to share your origin stories, but they're all, some are really tiny, some are really big. Um, but then we think of WCB in a way, the Wildlife Conservation Board is kind of filling in the gaps to some degree. They're different, they have a different role, but they at least provide an opportunity for conservation throughout the state. Andy or Whitney, you want to add anything about that I got wrong? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I think there that's a good matchup because I know sometimes we're able to provide funding to someone for acquisition and then we kind of contact WCB and say, hey, this is a great opportunity. We really recommend it. And they're able to to fill the other half. So I think there's a lot of good partnerships there too, where sometimes it's a huge cost for a river restoration or meadow restoration project, but we're able to partner with like WCB and things like that to help fill the whole gap. Yeah. And I, I love that about the CNRA agencies that you all talk to each other and you share ideas on how to move projects forward. Um, somebody saying, let me see what other questions there was. I guess that's it. I actually have to, I have to close this out and tell people what, what's coming next. So first, let me just say thank you to our guests. This was super helpful. And I think Jason's going to show our last bits of slides. So these are contact information again. Um, reminder, this video will be posted at californianature.ca.gov. And we really hope you continue to follow this series. Uh, we have upcoming webinars. Um, so check out our website and stay up to date. We just added two new events on November 29th and December 1st. I think we've got everybody now that was at our um, expo. And I'll just let you know that we are collecting some of the frequently asked questions that aren't specific to this uh, particular webinar. And we are working on a additional resources and FAQ page for our website. So stay in touch. And if you're not on our email list, sir, please get on it. We want you to be part of our partnership and help us make this happen. So Whitney and Andy, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to celebrating some great projects with you moving forward and go 30 by 30. Have a great day. Take care, everyone.